helping these kids play. This is a feather in a lot of people's cap. I'm, I'm really excited for myself and Polk. He's the biggest one in the last three years, but I'm kind of oldie. <laughs> Boise State 37, Nevada 27. A program turning victory, time will tell. Certainly the biggest in Pokey Allen's second season as Bronco head football coach. And a victory that begins what BSU football fans hope will be the biggest week in school history. Thursday, the State Board of Education is asking, is being asked by uh, Boise State officials for permission to let this football program go to Division 1A. And Pokey, if there were ever a circumstance where people wondered, can this team now compete at the 1A level? It proved it Saturday night at the state. Well, we did for a one-night deal. I, uh, you know, we didn't play as well as I'd like still, and I'm not being negative, but it was a great victory for us. I mean, I was really excited for the kids, and uh, this this team's got a little magic to them. Uh, you know, they don't play well all the time. They're still new, but when it gets going, it gets real tough. They got some magic and toughness about them. It's really kind of exciting. Do you feel going into this game that you had to resort to some gadgets in order to, to score quickly and, and get a leg up on Rio? Well, we thought we had uh, some of those plays. Al told me about the two plays. and uh, We worked on them before for other teams, too. It's not like we just ran them against Reno, but uh, they worked just great. I mean, it really, you know, when you score two touchdowns on trick plays and you get a long interception return, that really makes a difference. It had to shock a lot of people, and perhaps even you, when Al called the first trip play on the third play from scrimmage. Well, he said he was going to do it early, and I said, great, do it when you get good field position. And it uh, just worked great. You know, the safety bit, and the Husky ran it just perfect, and a great throw. And a look of shock on the Nevada sideline. The Wolfpack driving right back down the field in their first possession, and I think probably 21,000-plus begin to think, oh, boy, this is going to be a wild one. And we had a chance a couple times to make on third down to make big plays, and we just didn't make a, make the big play. Uh, we didn't have a real good pass rush. They ran the draw when we tried to blitz them. Uh, I thought they did a good job of calling plays. When we blitzed, they had an answer for it. When we laid back, we didn't get a very good pass rush. And this is a great interception. He read the three-step drop and cut in front. And you got to have some team speed to catch Rasheed Gale. He's, he's got some real fast feet. And they catch him with his song. I mean, they got some speed. That's one of the few disappointments on the evening that that young man wasn't uh, able to get it into the end zone and get credit for the touchdown. But the Broncos put it in very quickly. The Seattle's on the first play from scrimmage. So what could have been a 7-7 seven seven game is now 14 zip. 14 to zip. And uh, we hold them here and get, a, get another chance. And, we were really great on kickoff coverage, and we've been very poor on two games on that, and we really came to play. And I think the kickoff coverage really sets the tone for uh, the way a team's going to play. And kickoff returns, as we will see also. Now we get good field position the whole first quarter, it really makes a difference. Uh, because in the second quarter, we did, we ran the crack screen, got a good block. Hosky threw one of the better blocks I've ever seen a wide receiver throw. We get down to the 10-yard line. And it's one thing to have that great field position and get all those opportunities, but you virtually nothing go unclaimed. You took advantage of every break and every opportunity. And our field goal kicker, Erickson, really did a great job. I mean, really did a great, great job. Another nice throw by uh, Hilly. Uh, bump flat, and this is one of the great things about him. He gets 50 yards of rushing when there's nothing. Uh, here's another great run. You know, he makes a miss. And he's got enough speed to get in the end zone. D.C. Adams for his second touchdown, and still with a couple minutes of play in the first quarter, it's Boise State 24 and Nevada nothing. But back come the Wolfpack, and we knew it wasn't going to be easy if the Broncos were going to win this one. There's no question. We we didn't play that pass very well. We probably should have had an interception on it if we'd have played it well. But uh, we made some mistakes in the first half and then played pretty good defense in the second half. Broncos got a fumble back there as the full moon was over Broncos Stadium. I think it had something to do with it, but uh, Wolfpack come right back. Uh, the Broncos were unable to get a pass rush on Maxwell all night long. How much of that was Nevada's huge offensive line? I think they did a good job. and. You know, when a quarterback gets a lot of time, he starts getting some confidence, and I think it really helped him. Here's uh, 
one of uh, Willie Bowen's real good runs. Great blocking. Uh, this after Nevada had scored with 30 seconds left in the first half. And this allows it's on the next series. But uh, now they started blitzing us a little bit, and that, that hurt us a little bit. Uh, I thought we had another interception there, and they get a long gainer. So, uh, you know, we're now in a, in a tough deal right now. I mean, they're moving the ball, and they're stopping us, and they got good field position. Uh, they're afraid to kick to Bowens now. We fumble it. Uh, or I tell you, we fumbled twice in a row there, and that really hurt us. This is a touchdown saving interception by Rashid Gale, his second of the evening, and certainly giving him credentials that warrant defensive player of the week consideration in the big sky. But again, the Broncos find the ball uh, a little difficult to hang on. And the batter takes advantage. Now, I believe we'll see the kickoff return that allowed a huge, huge play at the end of the first half. Just a half minute remaining before intermission. Bowens gets outside the containment. All the way to the Nevada 37 yard line. So the Broncos set up a Hail Mary on the right side and go left. The hook and ladder to KC for six. And there was some question about whether the lateral was forward. It was, it was pretty close. I, I personally think it was a lateral, but I think. I, no, no, he wouldn't. But I think what happened is uh, as he got hit, it pushed him back, but the ball continued flat. But, you know, it was a close play. I'm sure glad we got it. I, I liked the 14 points at halftime. You lobbied fairly hard for that one. Yeah, I think Al and I were both talking very, very hard. And uh, I thought we needed to get that play. Uh, to have that call back would have been uh, a bad thing for us, especially for momentum's sake. They were, they were really coming hard, and uh, they gave you the 14-point lead again at, at intermission. What do you say when you go in the locker room after that kind of a first half? I mean, in your wildest dreams, it could not have been any better. Ain't over yet. Well, you know, I thought if we could put them away when we had them 24-0, I, I thought that would be great, you know, and uh, have them quit. But once they started going, we I knew we were going to have some problems. And they got a good football team. They got great talent, great athletes. and uh, We had a real bad period. Uh, there in the second quarter and also the third quarter offensively. Well, we'll take a look at some of those second half highlights and uh, as bad as the third quarter may have been in the coach's eyes, a lot of guys stood up and uh, played tall in the fourth. Stay with us. Tony Hilly and I, he can really run with the football. He, 
He's not afraid. Now we run the quarterback draw. Uh, and, you know, that's the kind of quarterback you want is a guy that's going to take over the game when you got to have it taken over. And he did. He did a great job. Here's the hitch, the one where you see him go helmet to helmet with the tackler. He wisely calls timeout. He can barely put his hands together to do it at this point. What was your conversation like at that point? What did you advise Tony? Well, he, he said he was uh, really having some problems. and uh, We just let him sit there for a little while, and uh, he was fine. Uh, we thought he might have been able to run into the end zone on that other play, and uh, maybe just a little dinged up. And then we kick the field goal, a big field goal. The most important thing, we get that seven-point lead back because the Wolfpack on their way back. Again, great play by Stephon Reed. He's really been developing into a great linebacker. And here is, here, that's why a football is shaped the way it is. I know. Oh, man. I mean, they have it on the one-inch line. We get real lucky. Uh, Danny Weeks had another uh, great day. Pony did a great job. Gets it out on the seven yard line. Now the tables are reversed and they don't have field position. This is where the defense stiffens the big hit by Foley. That's ruled a fumble recovery by Chris Cook. Takes it down. It's a uh, field position is affected by a penalty, but still the Broncos are set up for some very important points here. Possession of the ball is really critical at that stage, and the clock continues to move because that's the real end now. No question. And they, they, uh, we kicked the field goal. Now we got a 10 point lead. Uh, makes a big difference, 10 point lead with that much time. And we just told them we didn't care about the yardage here. We just didn't want them to score quick and let anything strange happen. And, uh, I'm score. glad they didn't score. The 10 point win will be impressive in this morning's paper as well as in the history books. And the night on which you throw out the stats, 538 yards for Nevada to 348 for the Broncos, including 430 passing for uh, UN. Uh, enough said there, you don't need first downs when you score in big plays though, right? Tony Hill, the 11 of 20, 392 yards, two TDs, the biggest stat there doesn't show, no interceptions, and 57 yards rushing helps too. Casey Adams' book, uh, 98 yards rushing with two touchdowns, 81 yards receiving with a TD, and uh, three pump returns for 35 yards. And the Casey Chronicles tonight, he has three 200-yard games in all-purpose offense. The BSU career record, career record is four. Eight touchdowns, the BSU leader last year had five for the whole season. 50 points now for Casey Adams. BSU leader last year had 50 points over the whole season. Uh, elsewhere offensively, uh, on the receiving end last night, as we move on to Ryan Akibi with three catches for 18 yards. Still want to get Ryan the ball more. Uh, Jared Housky, three catches for 80 yards and a huge TD to lead off the game. And some comments from Al Borges and some other offensive stalwarts for the Broncos. The great job, I thought, of preparing for some situations. And we, we stole the touchdown at the end of the half because we took a play that we practiced once a week on Friday. We put it in the end zone, you know, when I think we were really down, and I think that made it was a big momentum shift. We didn't expect Coach Borges, the offensive coordinator, to open it up like that. He said he was going to open it up, and the uh, flea flicker was going to come early in the game. We didn't expect it on the third play. We came out real strong, and uh, we knew we had a lot to prove, and we knew that they didn't really uh, have a lot of respect for us, and we wanted to uh, take them to the punch. and. Uh, we got, we got to keep it going, though. I mean, we could have, we had the momentum so much that we could have beat them by 70 points if we would have kept the momentum going. And, I mean, that's just another thing we got to work on. But, boy, that's a huge win for us. 70 points. Rasheed Gale, 12, big night for Rasheed. 12 tackles, the two interceptions, the 87-yard return, the second longest in BSU history. Stephon Reed, eight tackles, three pass deflections, two of them on huge third-down plays. Brian Smith, 16 tackles. Chris Cook, 12 tackles and a fumble recovery. Uh, Nevada had 84 plays from scrimmage last night. Here's some comments from the BSU defense. We came with some big plays, especially the secondary. I had two picks, and Chris Cook had a big pick, and Stephon Reed was breaking up passes like a DB. I mean, it was great. I mean, we were fired up out there. They were stuffing people. They were hitting people. They were intimidated. I think this game just showed us the strides we can make and showed us how hungry we really are and let everybody else know in the conference, you know, you can't walk over BSU no more. But we said, said to ourselves that we was going to um, come out and flip everything around. We go say that. We was going to say that um, statement about not enough players. We don't want to play you anymore. So we're telling him that. 
And I talked to Cliff Heisel today, and he was he was really down, and he said exactly that. Uh, they thought they were pretty good and went down, and Weber State was really up and ready to play, and uh, they never really got it going. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll begin to look forward as the Broncos prepare to host the Liberty Flames. We've also got our senior profile. Stay tuned. When a junior college player enters a program, it's usually to make a big impact. Sometimes that impact is a little bit later than expected. Case in point, Bronco wide receiver Lee Schrack. And Brad LaRondo takes a look at the transfer from Tempe, Arizona. Throwing just 38 passes when he played in only six games probably wasn't what Lee Schrack expected last fall when he transferred to Boise State as a quarterback. And while he didn't assume that leadership role, which comes from taking snaps from center, he did find his niche with the Bronco team. Last spring during the issue's annual blue orange scrimmage, to be exact, that's when he made the move to wide receiver, hauling in three passes, one for a touchdown. At first, they tried to tie it in, and I think I was, I was uh, physically ready for the uh, offensive line type. But as a receiver, it was, it was pretty fun. The, uh, Jared made it fun, he taught me some moves, and, you know, and, Proper ways catching the ball and all, but it was, you know, it was pretty easy to transfer, I think. Through three games this season, Shrack is among the team leaders with seven catches. One, a 13 yard touchdown strike from Tony Hildy. The touchdown, you know, it's pretty exciting when you throw it in and you run it in and you catch it, so uh, it's, it's a pretty good feeling, though. You know, but I, I think as a feel, as a receiver now, it's you look at that ball and it comes in slow motion. And you're like, come on, come on. But it's uh, it was a pretty good feeling, so. The Bronco coaches will agree that Shrack has a double to the ball, evidenced by this fumble recovery against Northeastern, and brings the complete package to the receiver position. Nice hands, receiving speed, big body, and above all, good blocking skills. An impressive combo for a longtime quarterback who's found his mark as a receiver. The Bronco Spotlight, I'm Brad Morocco. Well, many guys go through that frustration, what can be a frustration of moving and changing positions, and you love it when a guy responds, performs, and works as hard as Lee Shrek has to see him have some success like he has. And we're excited that it worked. You know, a lot of times you change people's position, and they're, they're real bad at the other position, but Lee Shrek is really a talented receiver. I wish we had him for two years at receiver. So Liberty University and Sam Reticoliano coming in Saturday night. Is this kind of like the second week of the season where you were riding a high and you got to be concerned about getting the players up this week? Because Liberty is a good team, lost only by 10 to a good 1A team, uh, Toledo, last night. And they throw the heck out of the ball. Uh, we, we've seen some passing quarterbacks come in here, and we haven't been especially good against the pass. And uh, shoot, they throw it almost every time. He was 31 of 55 last week for... God, well, that's knows how many better. yards. <laughs> so we got our work cut out for us. We we got to get the defense ready to play and play harder. They'll run us right out of the stadium. Well, this will be dress rehearsal for the Big Sky season. It is the last non-conference game Saturday night at the stadium, and then the Broncos will be heading to Flagstaff to open the Big Sky campaign. We hope you have a chance to get out and see the game in person. And whether you do or not, be sure and join us for Broncos Spotlight right here with Pokey Allen next week. Good night, everyone.